Well, apparently, uh, Brandon is bumming cigarettes here. This is the uh, 12th episode of the Central Texas Music Experience podcast, and uh, we're doing things a little bit differently today. We have uh, Matt Siegel and Frank Ramirez uh, from Seven Years Today here with us in the studio. We're, we're going to do this without any music today, so I just want to you know, thank you guys for coming out and having a rip-roaring good time. Did you just lose your cigarette? Yeah, Go ahead, man. Go for it. Go for good it. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Try to throw Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Brandon, you're fired. Right. <clears throat> we're, po- we're posting that. Brandon, you're fired. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, this is going to be a different little setup. Uh, of course, if, if you guys have been paying attention uh, the last couple episodes, we had some issues with our live feed. So we decided to go back to the uh, old school way of doing things. We're just going to record everything. And then uh, once we get our issues uh, fixed, then we'll go back to the live feeds. And we'll be just like watching, you know, three goofballs or two goofballs, you know, uh, Telling stories and stuff, and <laughs> so, but uh, t- uh, before we get into it, I'm gonna start plugging some sponsors, and um, hopefully, I can get through this without forgetting anybody. Um, this episode of uh, the Central Texas Music Experience is brought to you by Horizon Design Photography. Go to www.horizondesignphotos.com. Uh, you can uh, visit the website and purchase any digital files or prints uh, that you have. They specialize in weddings, portraits, and events. Uh, we're also sponsored by Benes Customs Leather. Uh, you can check them out on www.facebook.com backslash Benes Customs. That's B-E-N-E-Z Customs. Um, I hope you know how to spell customs. Uh, they specialize in uh, custom handmade leather belts, holsters, slings, phone cases, and they also do uh, guitar straps. And i um, just waiting for him to finish up with Kirk Baxley's guitar strap. And I'll have to give that guy a call later. Uh, we're also sponsored by Buster Sports Bar. Uh, they do uh, karaoke. They, they got great burgers, great food, great prices on drinks. Um, they're right off of Veterans Memorial Boulevard, uh, right next to um, an un, I can't name the other bar that's right next to it, but it's the big one with lots of lights and stuff. Buster's is a bar all its own. Yeah, it is. And they got it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Russ. We'll, we'll probably see him in a few, in a few minutes when That's we get right. done here. We're going to head over there to go support uh, Stormy Lee uh, doing his. Uh, Stormy Lee. Uh, oh, and if you guys didn't know, Stormy Lee is now the uh, the bass player of Seven Years Today. And I got one more sponsor before we get into it is uh, Coop's Vinyl Graphics. Uh, they specialize in T-shirts, uh, banners, um, logo design, pretty much. Uh, if you guys were out at uh, Ashley Plumley's uh, Girls With Guitars at uh, All Bottoms Up, if you guys... Uh, Checked out the banner that was in the back hanging up on stage. That was the banner that was designed uh, by Coop's Vinyl Graphics. So, oh, here we go. We're already getting started. He's already. already getting started. Bringing the game. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, stop, come on. You're so tense. Stop, come on. Just, 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 just relax, okay. Matt. Okay, go for it. Go. Sweet right. baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I brought up Stormy. Uh, just a minute ago, and uh, being a new bass player, how how is that working out for you guys? Uh, well, first of all, before I, before we, you do, dive into that, how did that come about? What was the process getting to where you, you guys needed him to go, and then and then after that, you know, how did it work out? You know, with the shows because you guys had a busy week last week. Yeah, yeah. I'll let Matt take this one. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, Brad, our former bass player, we, we were made had to make some decisions about the direction of the band and uh as a band we wanted to get more and more on the road and brad um wasn't able to commit to that and you know brad's family so i fired him yes yeah, so frank <laughs> fired him so and uh we were talking about you know we really want to bring in someone that you know we know and we can keep that family vibe and uh mylon and stormy have been very close for years um i know stormy you know pretty well and Frank knows him biblically well now, it seems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we just, you know, said, hey, we got a crazy idea. You know, what do you think about playing bass for us? And I mean, I, it was one of my, I mean, like it was something that Mylon and I talked about because I love Stormy songwriting. To me, he's pretty much my favorite songwriter in Central Texas. So uh, I was like, man, we get to play Stormy songs too. So, um, but he's like, I'll give it a shot. And in like two weeks, he learned a set and he was smoking. He was just did great. And uh, ever since, I mean, we've been getting great feedback from everyone. 
And it just seems like we're really, the four of us are gelling on the level right now. Is that a word, gelling? Yeah. All right. But uh, if not, we can make it a word now. We'll make it a stamp word. Stamp of now. approval. It's, it's a word. It's Central a word. Texas Music Experience. Gelling. We stamp it. It's a word now. There we go. So, but yeah, so that's Stormy. So, so how did that, how did that process work out? Like, um, I mean, I know he's a guitar player, mm-hmm. you know, so, but it's a different beast, you know, jumping on the bass, you know, and so how, what was the process well, like? Did you guys have to practice, you know, a lot? To get down? I, I, I remember when we were kicking the idea around before we even had to even talk to Stormy, just as a the, as me, Mylon, and Matt just talking about it. And um, honestly, it was like it was to me. I could tell it was either going to be like one extreme to the other. It was either going to be like <clears throat> fucking awesome, which it is, or it was just going to be terrible. And you know, it was. I didn't think there was going to be a middle ground. I was kind of worried, but it worked out really well. I mean, the guys put in the fucking time. I mean, he's. He is really practicing, and uh, you know, and, and he's he's done it, man. He's really done it, because everyone knows that most bass players are failed guitarists. That's right. You know, and, That's, and he's not bass. a failed guitarist, <laughs> right? But, but we made him play bass, and he's he's really good at it. So I guess you were a successful guitarist because you were you played nah, bass. He's, yeah. he's, he's played bass. <laughs> yeah, I played bass. Yeah, he's, 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 he's Stormy's player. actually playing my bass. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I guess we turned Stormy into a failed guitarist. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt's still a film guitarist. Still. Well, I, I caught your show at um, at the Joker's Fest on Sunday, and you guys fucking rocked, man. I know you guys were beat, but, you know, you guys fucking rocked that night. And it was kind of funny because I'm watching the show, and you're kind of doing your thing, and the smoke machine is right in your fucking face. Mm. And it's blowing. I'm like, oh, man, he's getting Yeah, man. He's getting I don't know killed. what was in that thing, but it, I was higher than draft. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was looking That's for right it, there. there it. it was like a fucking spell tap moment. Cause really? like I'd be like playing a solo and it would just be like a blast <laughs> of all this smoke in my face. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I started, you know, veering over to the side to try to avoid it. And I would hear it like start up. So like every <laughs> once in a while, I just, you know, lean yeah. over. But yeah, it was. Nemo was punishing us for something. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. really was. Cause I was, it was just like. Yeah. Like, gotcha, bitch. Yeah, that yeah, was it. <laughs> Okay, well. <laughs> so, Frank, I know what Frank just thought. But yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not going to make that joke. I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, yeah. Not we're, this time. That, thank you. Because I love you. Yeah, all right, all right, thanks. And I so, love you for it. I know the last time that, uh, if, if you guys are not familiar with the show or the progression of the show, uh, we, had, uh, we had Matt and uh, we had Mylon, the lead singer of Seven Years Today, on. And it was a pretty nice uh, interview. And it was actually, I think, our second episode. Yeah, and here we are, number twelve, and now we have Frank, and they've been telling me, "Hey, we got to get Frank out here. We got to get Frank out here." And no one called me for the first one. I was kind of, I, was yeah. kind of I, I think they were embarrassed. Yeah, it was like, were. this is a professional show. We don't need, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, but I, after I, watching I, it, he's like, "This is bullshit." <laughs> this actually, this is my hope for this show. This this episode, I want to become a drinking game because every because I don't drink anymore. Uh-huh. But every time I say "fuck," because I'm going to say it a lot. You should take a you should take a drink out there, people. Take a drink. <laughs> so count them up, because I think I'm already at like four bucks at least. Five. Uh, then I gotta I gotta catch up. Yeah. Well. You yeah, know. I'm not drinking beer tonight. Uh, I'm drinking moonshine. So <laughs> midnight moon. Midnight moon. It's strawberry. It's pretty good. You know. <laughs> so I mixed it with a little bit of sweet tea, and it, it, people are like, what what the fuck is that? Sweet tea with the strawberry moonshine. Uh, it's fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. <clears throat> Frank, because the last time we didn't get, we didn't, I didn't really get to hear, mm-hmm. you know, your story. So here's your chance to tell it. Now you're here in front of the camera. This is going to be just so you know, this is how this, this, this works at this podcast. We put the video on YouTube, uh-huh. we put it on Facebook, and then we put the audio version of it on iTunes so people can, nice. so, nice. so tell your story, make it count. And, uh, basically how did you get involved in the world of music? Yeah. Um, I hate to say I've been playing drums as long as I have because I should probably be better for playing <laughs> 20 years. But you know, I, mean, I I think I started when I was about 15. And I got a drum set that the kid down the street didn't play anymore, and it kind of just ended up at my house. And um, patient parents, man, because I know my kids try and play my stuff, and I don't want to hear it. I don't know how they, my my parents put up with me. They did, and. Uh, Played that kit for for about a year until the kid finally wanted it back, and my mom surprised me with a with a drum set that she had bought off the thrifty nickel, and 
I wasn't really happy with it at first, and I look back on it. It's one of those things. It was like a 1976 Ludwig kit, and if I had it now, of course, you know, it's <laughs> one of those things. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, started with punk rock and a lot of Nirvana. N- 90s is when, you know, I'm going to date myself bad. Yeah. But, you know, that was what I want to date you bad. That, that was what was big <laughs> back in the old days, kids. And, uh, I just went from there. I took. I did take a big break though. Uh, it was about twenty three. I, I sold all my gear and I didn't play for, um, you know, almost ten years until I started working at GC again, or for, not again. GC for the first time. I, I bought a kit again. Started playing with my good buddy Greg. We had a little side project called Robots Are Evil. Um, it was just bass and guitar, bass and drums and. Every once in a while, we'd have a guitarist, real kind of primacy, noisy kind of stuff. Um, it was, um, it was a, uh, it was a commercial failure. I would say. <laughs> you didn't pack the halls with. Yeah, that no, on. we we were, um, yeah, you know, we were known in the music vault scene as the worst band probably ever. <laughs> but you know, it was fun. It was great, and it. I really look. I look back at those times as as um, as you know, really good times. It got me playing drums again, and uh, from there I went on and played with the Lost Bound Souls with Mr. Walter West in the Lost Bound Souls. Yeah, he he really helped me gain a lot of confidence. That's that was when I actually, because I mean when I was playing when I was young, there was a lot of you know VFW halls and crap like that. I mean we I I've never played for more than twenty people at a time probably, and then I hooked up with Wally and. My uh, first show with them, my first official show with them was a New Year's Eve show. And it was, it was amazing. It was amazing, you know. And from then on, I, I mean, I, everything's gone uphill from there, you know. I mean, it, it's, it's been awesome. It's really, it's been, it's been really fun. Um, went from Wally West and the Lost Bound Souls to Lazy J and the Dirty Shuffle. Played with him for about a year. I used to sub with these guys when they didn't have anyone, or they were going through drummers because Matt's a jerk. You know, That's you right. can't keep anyone around him because he's he's really mean. But um, <laughs> you know, I demand perfection. Yeah, we. I, I get him. I get him on a different level. So mm-hmm. you know, we we get along, and <laughs> I think that's why I've made it this long with the band. But now uh, I don't know. Uh, I this band is. It's fun. It's fun playing with people, playing playing for people, and they really, really appreciate what you're doing. You know what I mean? Because Mylon's a fucking rock star. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say we weren't all riding his coattails a little bit. I mean, he's he's a fucking star. You know, he he's, he's got the the quintessential you God know, damn, he long fucking, hair. And he's beautiful, the, man. <laughs> the, the the lead singer for the Turnpike Troopers kissed him on the face, man. Yeah. For the love of God. He's beautiful. Yeah. He's a beautiful man. So Yeah, I said that. That was a good story. Yeah, let, let, let's talk yeah. let's let's talk about the Turnpike Troubadour show. Everybody yeah. knows oh, man. It was awesome. uh you know right. uh the you know what happened as as far as you know it was a O'Brien show, it was an outdoor kind of thing. Um I, I really wasn't privy to the ticket sales, but I heard it was pretty packed. Uh I personally didn't get a chance to make it out there. I kind of regret that because you know, I'm looking on Facebook you know the after party that you guys played at inside, right? And I just heard nothing but good things, and I was like, "Damn it!" It's like, why didn't I make it out there? The night before, we were in Plano, listening, believe it or not, to a radio show at a bar outside, and then had a um, you know kind of song swap kind of thing going on that uh, Ashley was involved with. <clears throat> I can't use this show to really really plug her that often. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was at Eleven Warren Plano. Just every show, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Ashley, who? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, I saw these pictures. And I'm like, damn it! As I wish I may. and then I heard the stories. So kind of just explain explain to me how that how did that fall in your lap? How did the show fall in your lap? And then um, and then from there, you know, how the experience was, and you know, what do you feel like you gained from that experience? This is me. I guess B- both or yeah. both y'all. I mean, you, your ex- yeah. experience levels of what you gained experience wise are, yeah. ex- you know, it's, it's different. So. Well, it was funny cause, um, there are some people who said to us like, Oh man, that sucks that you're going to play the after show or the after party. Um, because you know, yeah, I'd love to be out on that big stage, 
But honestly, you know, I mean, I saw the opportunity right there when it was offered to us. I mean, besides the fact that uh, Turnpike and us are two very different bands. Right. I think us opening for Turnpike would not have been a bad decision um, just because we're heavier. You know, yeah. I mean, we're not I mean, we're not. Not fat. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, maybe, but yeah. that's not. What <laughs> but um, it was cool, and it was like there was so much energy after the Turnpike show because that was the one thing I noticed that even though we're not, you know, like it's a different style, um, somewhat of music, it had a very similar energy because they have lots of like fast yeah. songs and lots of just that kind of frenetic, you know, vibe going. Uh, and, and a lot of the songs that the other thing, if I go back to Stormy, putting him in the band is we get to play his songs and his songs are, um, it's awesome because we've got these more rock and roll songs and then we've got these songs that, that Stormy's written that are, they're essentially rock and roll songs too, but they've got more of a country flair vibe to them, whatever you want to say. Yeah. And it, it's, I mean, it's cool, man. It makes us a more diverse band. It really, it's, it's, it's broadened our sound, I think. And. I mean, I know, so like, Stormy's acoustic sets are are different than what, like, if he plays those songs, yeah, yeah. way different than what we do right. when we play them full band as, as Seven Years Today. It's like... The different dynamics yeah, and yeah, definitely. presentation, you know? Right. Yeah. So it was just great because, like, after Turnpike was done, like, we were all pumped up. We were ready to go. And, I mean, you know, we were hanging out with our friends. You know, we had a bunch of friends with us. We, the crowd just filtered into the bar, and we just hit it. And... Um, we had people say to us that was our best set that they've seen either ever or in a very long time. Did you feel pressure getting on that stage after, you know, could, did you feel like you were, you know, after playing for, you know, a big band, you know, like Turnpike and then going in, you're like, man, there's, is it, was there an amount of pressure? Like, man, we got to be on point. Well, I'll take this one because I actually, I've been lucky enough. This is the second time that I've played with and around Turnpike. We opened up with them once at Shep, for them once at Sheps with Wally West. Mm-hmm. And um, some bands, like, I'm not big in, I'm not a, big into Texas country, and I've, op- I've been lucky enough to open up for some cats that are pretty famous, but I, I don't know the names, so I don't have, like, any pressure. Like, I don't... Like Josh Grider? Like Josh Grider. Like, I didn't know who the hell... Jo- I asked Josh Grider if he was the band when we opened up for him, and he was kind of like, yeah, and then, like... 15 minutes later, he comes up to me and he's like, hi, my name's Josh. I'm like, who? He's like, Josh Grider. I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah. Oops. Got a couple of <laughs> number ones on the Texas music chart. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, that guy. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Sorry. But I mean, like, the going back to that, like, Turnpike, the first time we opened up for him, after they were done playing, they fucking hung out with us. They talked with us. We fucking drugged them to ABU. They mm. drank with us and just fucking chilled out. And I mean, I don't drink anymore, so it's kind of, kind of funny when we we were doing this show. And I go up to the merch guy, and I was just kind of bullshitting with him. I was like, "Well, we, you know, I opened up for y'all before," and he was like, "Oh, you! I remember you. You're that drunk fucking drummer, man. You're fucking crazy." And I was like, "Oh, you gave me a free hat, so I guess it paid off a little bit." But there, I guess what I'm saying is that they're really personable guys i mean they could be you know total asses because they're sure. pretty popular they actually stayed and watched us play the, you know our whole, not the whole set but about halfway through when they were done doing whatever, whatever they were doing outside they came in stood at the bar watched us play yeah. i mean and you don't honestly i've opened up for a lot of you know pretty big texas guys or whatever and that doesn't happen. Wow. Doesn't it was just, happen like a show, a just like a level of respect for you know the yeah. musicians. It was cool, yeah. and I mean even like Evan the singer and the bass player whose name escaped. RC RC is that um, they stayed the whole show and we hung out with them after. And granted, Evan was smashed off his ass, but uh, yeah, you know which was hysterical. But yeah, and that's when he planted a kiss on my island, and I forgot exactly what he said. It was something like "I love y'all's music" or. Something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I was y'all's. gone by then. I, I oh, had, were you? Yeah, I had already no. left. But he did. He did tell me that. Um, he said you're a solid drummer, and you got some sweet harmonies, man. And I was like, oh. What's your Frank name again? does have. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Who are you? Frank <laughs> does have sweet harmonies. Josh Carter. <laughs> so I mean, as far as like. I guess what I meant by pressure, my interpretation of pressure would be uh, not uh, not you know how famous they are, mm-hmm. 
but the musical skill level that they're at that has gotten them to where they can be, you know, on the charts, yeah. so to speak. Did that add, add any kind of pressure or did you see it in that way? Or you say, hey, these are just another bunch of guys who are playing and we're just happen to play after them. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I really saw it as pressure. I saw it as it definitely um, kind of drove me to say, let's fucking throw down. And, uh, you know, let's just have a great show. And let's at one point I was like, let's just have some fun. Right. Um, because that's when we have our best shows is just like when we have a good time. And uh, I think I had four Red Bulls. So yeah. That usually works for me. Is it almost like I mean, I mean, to me, it's almost like is it like going into like a prize fight in your hometown and like the home the hometown guy is is the champ like you guys around this area. To me, in my personal opinion, you guys are one of the, the, the tightest bands oh, in this area. I thought, yeah. Are we the so, champs? Is that yeah, right? the, 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 you guys, <laughs> are we the champs in yeah, this analogy? Yeah, oh, the, in, 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 my, <laughs> in mine, in my opinion. Now, everyone can have their own opinion. Okay, yeah, you got, yeah. you know, you yeah, got Wally, we, you got you, Kirk. You just you got, added like yeah, 10 something. haters yeah, that's cool. right that, now. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, okay. if, I were, if I were to grade bands on, on an overall scale of uh, musicianship, uh, originality, uh, stage presence... Uh, you know, the getting the crowd involved, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. I would have to give it to you guys, hands down. That's just based on me. And and you you have a lovely, lovely lead guitar uh, player and a lovely, lovely drummer who has sweet harmonies. Sweet and, harmonies. and you have a rock god on stage with yeah, those dude. golden locks. That's right. You know, He's the beautiful. shining yes. with the, the sun rays of Zeus. And, That's right. And uh, praise Odin. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. And uh, so... If I, if I was to judge based on on the look and the musicianship and you've got like to I mention said, Stormy's beard, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it adds a lot. That's, yeah. that's, 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 that's a lot of power. It's, right there. Stormy's beard is it's some pretty, serious shit. I'm right surprised there. you guys don't hook up a generator to that thing <laughs> <laughs> and just get rocking. <laughs> that's it. He needs a fan. <laughs> so, you know, with with that in mind, you know, I, I see you guys as a champ. So, like O'Brien's is kind of one, y'all's place, in it's my opinion. Over. Yeah. So, it's like okay. Maybe if I can get into your head a little bit. Okay, this is our house. We're going to fucking rock this place. and We're going to blow people's heads off. Is that kind of what the motivation was? This is our house. We're not going to get shown up in our house. For me, it really wasn't about getting shown up um, because that crowd was there for Turnpike. You know, I mean, Turnpike is obviously a band that you know, a lot of people love, and I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Turnpike, so I was so excited to be a part of it. Um, I was honestly sort of my, my mindset was really, I just wanted to keep the crowd. I wanted, you know, and I wanted, I mean, I didn't even know that Turnpike was there, honestly, watching us until maybe about three quarters of the set through. And then I was like, oh, fuck, there's Turnpike. What is the holy shit moment? <laughs> yeah, I had a little bit of a holy shit moment. And, uh, you know, I turned to Frank. I was like, they're over there at the bar, you know, and uh, I think I said, what? Yeah. <laughs> huh? I couldn't hear anything. Yeah, you can't hear shit on stage. But um, but it just pushed me even further. It's just like, man, this I'm glad we're rocking out. I'm glad we're really kind of representing today because, you know, and that's really cool that they show. hang out. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool that they hung out with you guys at, afterwards yeah. mm-hmm. and got a chance to see, you know, like, OK, well, these guys aren't. Dicks I, I mean, so I'll tell speak. you what, what it, I mean, to me, what it boils <clears> down to is when you, you're, there's a lot of local bands in, in this area. We're kind of fortunate for that. We have, for a town this size, we have a scene, you know, where there's a lot of talented musicians. And when you, what, it, what it all boils down to is, you know, everyone's talented. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't really see it as a competition or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's, everyone's got their own little Thing that, that they do. Like you know? a little piece of the pot. Yeah. yeah. It, what it, I mean, what it boils down to is we're just a bunch of guys with, you know, instruments that do our thing. And I mean, I don't go out there with the mindset that, I'm, you know, that I'm better than anybody else. Cause I know there's drummers better than me, but when, when we're all four of us clicking on stage, yeah, I mean, it feels right sometimes, you know what I mean? It, it's it, hard to beat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, that we're the, that I think we're the best band in town. Yeah. I'm, that, that, those words will never come out of my mouth. They, they won't. <laughs> He'll think it, but yeah. no, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> I think it all the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, honestly, we're not going to, I'm not going to be intimidated by, uh, a guy that that's, you know, that they've, they've sold a lot of records, but, We've got a lot of good songs too. I mean, we we our songs hold their own, and when 
we're gonna have our moment too. You know, all our songs will get out there. You know. So sp- speaking of uh, songs getting out there, last time that I was in the studio with you, Matt, um, we had just. I believe we mentioned something about talking about a EP or getting some recordings done. And in between that time and now, you guys have actually released some some stuff. So how? Uh, what was that process like? Um, well, miserable. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. No, no, no. <laughs> no we uh, we recorded a few songs at uh, Brad's studio, and um, we're sort of evaluating now, like, what's our goal? Because we've kind of sh- like kind of changed direction a few times. Um, not in regards to the sound, but in regards to what's our goal. Um, for so long, I've been very anti-CD um, because I think the CD is a dead format. Um, but the more and more I see, uh, I think here, I think the CD is a dead format when you're at the national level. I think I have to, I had to kind of reevaluate that thinking. Um, but I think when you're a band on the road and you're trying to sell merchandise, people want to take home music. Right. So yeah. um, it's really the question of, and this is something we're still discussing. Do there will any- be a Seven Years Today vinyl record coming, I promise you. Yes, there will be. If it's, if it's a 45 single with two songs, there's going to be something yeah. vinyl out there. At least, you know, if I have That'd to be pretty cool. my fucking self, I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, because <laughs> Frank, yeah, definitely. I like records. He like records. He You're a vinyl records. fan. But um, I think I've seen a little bit of your collection I think on, online. Everyone on, that's... Yeah. that's Anywhere near my Instagram or Facebook has seen my yeah. collection, unfortunately. So I was hanging at Frank's house today. Yes. And he bought a new Melvin's record. Yes. And as it, he puts it down, he gets this brush. And I don't even know, what it's, do you, it's is a, it just called a record brush? It's or a it? vinyl cleaning kit. Vinyl cleaning kit. The, it's brand new, this record. <laughs> and he was still, like, right away, just wiping it. had a little dust it. on it. Had a little <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? It makes it sound better. And I was just... It was just so Matt funny. Matt knows to watch nothing it. about that. There's so, some. Yeah. There's something about that 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 older element that's got those imperfections in there that just that become part of the music. Yeah. You know, on you know, on the actual vinyl itself, it's, I mean, it's very hard to capture that you know digitally. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. It's it's the only reason vinyls last this long is because it's a it's a better audio file than a digital file. I mean, it just it really does sound better. So, yeah. You know. It's uh, but long story short, I don't know if we're doing an EP or if we're doing a full length. Um, we're kind of kicking around the idea of doing five. We've got some finished songs that aren't out there, right? Yeah, I mean, we've got some stuff we're holding on to right now. Yeah, I mean, we're still kind of debating it all. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> with Stormy's material. Yeah, I mean, like his I, songs are next, ooh, man. man. Yeah, there's like what four that are just fucking. Yeah, they're phenomenal. all like some of them like. And we I think most of them are single worthy. Yeah, you know, it's and like, we learned them so like we clicked on them, just amazingly fast it was just fucking it was ridiculous yeah like yeah these are winners so we got something coming out next i don't know sometime between three and six months we just don't know what yet yeah so we're kind of up you know like uh, the kind of advice that i've gotten and have given is the whole product mentality Mm -hmm. you know it's like you go into a board meeting and you want to start opening up the market for your your business you're going to have a have to have a presentation so you have to present something that's, you know, that's marketable. Obviously, the band, you know, the, a band is essentially like a, a product. So you have to have, you know, aspects of that product that's, you know, that can be marketed. Right. And obviously, you know, a, a CD or, you know, uh, iTunes or, you know, whatever, T-shirts, those kind of things. That, that's part of the whole marketing package. Right. So, you know, and... I try to give people advice about that all the time. I mean, what do I know? I'm just a, a personality, but you, know, it's, 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 you are a personality. It, it's different. It's, di- <laughs> it's different than when you, uh, you know, you hear from somebody else that kind of got the same, you know, train of thought. You know, I, I was talking to uh, somebody that we're all friends with. I'm not going to mention the person's name, but he was kind of on the same level with me as far as you know. This is what I've done to where where I've got, gotten today. I mean, has this person been on your podcast? Yes, they have. Okay. And uh, here is, you know, here's it Mylan. No, no. And bing, 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 bing. And everything I was saying was kind of resonating with him as far as, you know, this it is. It was Kirk, this, wasn't it? It was. It was. Uh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like turning this interview around a little. <laughs> <laughs> but the camera can't see me. Yeah, that's true. Thank God. <laughs> I'm a hot mess, folks. Uh. This is a chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes are, are kicking my, kicking my ass. Great. Yeah. 
Yeah, he oh. picked a good woman there. She yeah. cooked chicken fried steak. Every time we come in here, we we try to do some good cooking and, you know, have some drinks or, you know, whatever. It's going to leave the format open to whatever you guys want to talk about and whatever you guys want to do. So, um, so outside of the product, um, if you guys don't mind, I want to go on your Reverb Nation page and, and kind of plug a couple dates if you guys don't mind. Uh, actually, it would be better if you went to maybe your, our 7 years seven today dot page. Com. Yeah, the Reverb Nation page. I'm having a little bit of a revolt against. I am so unprepared. I remember the last time you guys were here, I had written down I questions. I give you a, a really important date is um, October 25th. We're going to be at Denim and Diamonds in Temple. Okay. Um, that's our only full band headlining show for this month in Central Texas. So. And then you guys going to be hitting the road? Yeah, yeah, we have a. Uh, we're gonna be in Sugarland next week at the Big Ben Tavern. I could, you know, if you want to plug away. I'm yeah, sorry. I got the. I don't uh, want to steal your thunder. No, no you're you're fine. <laughs> See, I got the. Uh, yeah, I got it right here. Big Ben Tavern, um, in Sugarland, uh, Thursday, October the seventeenth. <clears throat> yeah. Yep, and then uh, Denim and Diamonds, uh, Miller's Barbecue. That's going to be a uh, acoustic. That's acoustic. Uh, October the twenty sixth. Yeah, we're also Delta. playing a uh, a car show at Chef's. On um, I think it's October nineteenth. That's Saturday. I might not have the date on there. I don't have all the information yet. But we're playing with the derailers, so that will be pretty cool. They're you know old school country stuff. So. Dates are lagging behind, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, you guys stay pretty busy cons- uh, consistently. I, I I give you guys a lot of credit for that. That takes a lot of work. Just to make phone calls and, you know, say, uh, Matt, is that all your your responsibility? Uh, That's Matt. For the moment. You know, I can't wait for the day where I could hand it off. We do have one booking agent that we're working with also, and she books us some dates. But um, so far, the majority of dates, yeah, I do the booking. And so, I mean, that that responsibility, like I'm barely getting involved, you know, with the whole booking aspect. Give us some insight, man. Okay, so yeah, Matt, give us some insight. So booking pretty much consists <laughs> of Frank bitching at me. Yeah, about, <laughs> man, I can't leave my job if we're only doing this, you know, one day a week. But um, get your shit together. Get your shit together. That's pretty much Frank's message to me. So how often do you do you want to be playing? Oh, we want to be playing at least <clears throat> three nights a week, at and least. at least. I mean, honestly, I want us to be out on the road. Well, at least Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I wouldn't mind adding Wednesday in there. There's a venue I'm working on in Corpus that does Monday nights. I mean, fuck, I'll go play any night of the week. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I that's want- the ultimate goal is just to be. I mean, honestly, I'd play every night if if we could, you know. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I wish it was just show up at the bar and say, "Hey, we're gonna play. Pay me." It's right, not right. like that. You know what I mean? And then you got to book runs to where, you know, hopefully, they're falling close enough together where you can do them. You know, and I mean, it, it's a, it can be a hassle. I'm glad that I don't do it. I'm glad I just get to bitch it mad about it. You know? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty much my. That's that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's motivational. It is. So we're yeah. talking about bitching. Yeah, it's motivational bitching. He's right. It's yeah. not. It's never negative. Bi- well, no, it's not negative. It's actually. really negative. What's what's the nature of y'all's relationship in the band? Um. Well, well when Matt it comes to when, when it comes to practicing, you mean like on the top or no, uh, no. What, what, I, what, what I mean is is like <laughs> when when it, when, it, when it comes to you guys are obviously friends. So when it comes to practicing, and, and if you guys have you know differences in you know obviously you're gonna have differences of opinion. You're both individuals. Uh, how do you guys hash hash through that? You know, yell. yeah. Um, Does anything get accomplished? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, honestly, we don't really have any. Ma- we haven't had any major fights yet. You know, um, we w- Matt and I are, were friends before the band, and then I think for a long while there, there was a, there was a point where I was, you know, I wanted to join and. They were without a drummer, but they were like, you know, I would hear from Matt, yeah, we're trying this guy out. And I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? What do you mean you're trying some guy out? I'm like, right right here. I'm right here. And he's like, well, you know, I don't know. And I think we I think we didn't, you know, we didn't want it to end bad and then not be friends, you know. It was one of those yeah, things, so you we, know. So we gave him, you know, we're like, all right. Actually, I got skipped man. over, like, well, like three drummers before they realized I was, you know, badass. The shit, yeah. yeah <laughs> 
Well, also, I mean, we had a big thing about poaching. Like, we didn't want... He was playing with Lazy J. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, and you know, Jay and I are friends. And, you know, I definitely never want to steal a musician from another band. But, I mean, Frank got to a point where, I mean, they weren't really playing anymore. And, <clears throat> I mean, I don't want to put words in Frank's mouth. But, you know, he was ready to make a change. And, you know, I think we all saw... The more and more we played together... Yeah, yeah, it was coming together. It was like, coming together. It took some time to come together, and we yeah. all... I mean, we were, like, there was some gigs when I was filling in. There was maybe one or one or two that weren't good. Yeah. <laughs> they were not good gigs for me. Yeah. So so how do you handle that now? If you, if you ever have a... You just have an off night? I don't I don't have off nights. So you're good. Yeah. Okay. That's how I handle so... it. With perfection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Matt, are you the, for the, the, the same way? Except for that one gig, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I, well, if I, honestly, if anything goes like, if we have, because nothing ever goes a hundred percent right. I mean, yeah. It, it, there, there's things, things go wrong, and I, I just blame Matt. <laughs> That's right. That's what I do. Well, what if you That's bust ahead on, on 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 your kick pedal? You blame Matt. I mean, that. yeah. Well, that obviously was Matt's fault. Man, that's, <laughs> yeah. I hope that shit don't happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, I don't, uh, don't I mean, want to jinx nobody. Now, yeah, right. <laughs> we had this one gig that honestly, all of us were terrible. Um, the Josh Grider gig. That was not a good gig. That was not. We were just all. Everyone was off. Frank was off. I was terrible. I mean, just Brad was on the cruise. This was Brad's one of Brad's last yeah, gigs. It was his last gig. Uh, Guadalupe River. Club. Oh no! Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I got this. It's up fine. Here. Um, but Brad was actually on a cruise all week long with his family, and he drove from New Orleans <clears throat> that day, and he was drinking all week long. So Brad was, you know, terrible. I was working with a different amp, and I just I couldn't get the sound I wanted, and that really messes with me frank was on the other drummer's kit yeah i mean there was just all these things just didn't feel on. right yeah, yeah nothing was right yeah just everything around mylon was having an off night i mean we just all it was it we was almost <laughs> the gig that almost broke up the band honestly. yeah no, honestly wow. it was a yeah. bad moment we it almost like, yeah did y'all lose serious, it did y'all lose in front reflect. of each other no no one no one got like in each other's face but i think that everyone at one point was kind of like what are we doing? You know what I mean? Is yeah. this, is this where we want, is this what we want to do? And that's when you really sit down. Like no one said any, we, we if, I've noticed that too. Like if we do have an issue, we're really good at being adult about it. We don't have any like heat of the moment things. You know what I mean? Like no one, no one flies off the cuff and, and you know what I mean? And like, we don't talk about things while it's, you know, while people still are really emotional about it. We'll let it lie for a minute and then yeah. we'll come back to it. You know what I mean? And, so what's the general approach when you, if you like, with the show? What's the general approach that you guys took, you know, coming to evaluate, just being straight up honest oh, yeah. and saying, okay, this is how we did. Yeah, do we, do, do we really want to do this? You know, is this, yeah, I mean, we'll, change something? Well, we had other gigs booked. And I mean, and we were doing the transition with Yeah, Storm we and, were in the middle of a transition too, which yeah. didn't help. I think that the fact that we didn't, we had been practicing all week with Stormy. And hadn't practiced at all with Brad just because we'd been, you know, we played with Brad all the time. And we kind of took that for granted and didn't run anything. And then we showed up and just thought we were going to play. And, you know, it was just fucking, it was off, you know, yeah. it just wasn't there. And Is it, you know, no matter how many times you guys have played together on stage, you still got to get in there and hash out a few things. I, yeah, I tell yeah. you what, one thing <clears throat> we've had this past run of like the last five shows we've done, they've been fucking killer. But one thing we've done is we've been practicing two times a week. I mean, like, to like whatever our days off are in the week, um, we'll hit those two days in a row, and then we'll play a show that weekend. And it's like, who knew practice makes better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So when you're in practice together, what, what kind of issues do you guys address? Uh, you know, um, outside of, okay, we did this wrong on this song. Okay, the transitions. Uh, what are your main concerns when you get into the practice room? We make notes. I've, I, or at least I do. Um, if we play a song and maybe the ending didn't feel right, you know, I'll, I'll mark it on my set list, and then just so when we get together and be like, hey, okay, you know, blah 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 ended like shit. You know, can we just run the end? You know, or can we, you know whatever you know 
Is that what you write in your notes? Yeah. Ended blah, like blah, blah, shit. Blah. Ended like <laughs> doo doo. <laughs> Something smells bad on yeah, this song. That's it right. didn't make me feel right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Matt, what, what is your approach when it comes to that? Um, Let me answer this for Matt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Have you ever seen Frank's hands or have you ever felt, you haven't felt Frank's hands? No, I have really. not felt, uh, just Frank, shaking his hand. Yeah, yeah. Frank, he touches your arm sometimes. Well, I mean, he does it to me. Like, he touches it. <laughs> 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 but he's got these, I call them creepy pedophile hands. <laughs> and uh, oh, now he's all self-conscious. Now he's like yeah. hiding them. So, but like we'll be on the road and like there was one time where I was driving and he's next to me and he's just, you know, grabbing on to me like, you know, hey buddy, you know, and. Oh, God, it's creepy. It freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's why he does it, of course. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just tell everyone to stop sucking. But no, I'm just kidding. I mean, it can't be as simple as that, though. No, no, no. In all seriousness, I mean, it's it's the basic stuff. You know, if we realize something's not right, like, let's fix it. Let, you know, we just talk it through about, like, you know, what needs to be fixed. And, you know, we try some different approaches well it's been cool having stormy because stormy's got his little book of notes like i mean because he's still i mean he knows the songs but you know he actually keeps a notebook where he can look down and you know like this song is in you know a b d r <laughs> well, then OP. yeah you know i well i don't know i just play the drum so whatever but he knows in him being on his game like that he'll be like you know, hey, can we work on this bridge? And I'm like, what the fuck's a bridge? And then they tell me, and we go work on the bridge or whatever. I don't know. So he, him having all his notes and stuff like that has put a more focus on on actually like putting the microscope on spots that we need to to work on. You know what I mean? Instead of playing a song 15 times, thinking you know, it's going to be right. Yeah, you know. You know yeah. yeah. Instead of instead of just like, you know, you can't play it over and over if you if you don't. Know part exactly you need to work on you know what I mean? you gotta sometimes you gotta break it down in pieces so yeah and i think that's a big mistake that bands make is that like if there's a mess up um i think they just gloss over it a lot i mean i've been in bands that do that it's like oh okay we'll get it on the next one no if you're not getting it right stop work out that section and then run the whole song again and do it right and you got so much repetition happening especially once you're, you're getting it right it's gonna sound good yeah well, we've kind of talked a lot about work for the past 42 minutes and 30 some odd seconds. Oh, so let's talk man. about some play. Let's <laughs> yeah. talk about some play stuff. Okay. Has it been so, that long? I didn't know. That. <clears throat> yeah. 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 We got to talk times. about like, yeah. Let's talk about some fun stuff. What is what seven years? Okay. Uh, let me, I want to get Matt's perspective. Or I want to get Frank's perspective. Oh. What, is, what is it like with seven years today on the road? And give us one of your favorite road stories uh, that has come up maybe recently. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm first on this. Yeah, go. <laughs> I already know what I'm going to talk about. Oh, do you? About. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Um, seven years a day on the road. I mean, it really is almost like nonstop, just cracking jokes and just laughing. I mean, we have our moments where we're all just chilling out. But between Frank, I mean, who's really just like the, the joker of the band, and Mylon is actually a big practical joker, which, you know, he'll like, yeah, he'll do like little things and you won't even realize it. Um, I don't know. It's just like everyone's got their kind of thing and it just makes it a lot of fun. We have a really good time um, uh, when we're able to get on the road. You know, I yeah. mean, we, we had a little bit of a bad run, but now we've had some really <laughs> good runs, you know, thank God. So, but um, <laughs> which one call? I guess my favorite, I don't know if I. A funny story. I mean, after um, a gig, I'll just say in West Texas. I won't say where. Just to protect the innocent. Um, after the show, um, we went. Uh, we had some of our friends and uh, some of the fans that like we gained at this venue uh, come back to the hotel with us. And... Uh, we just, it was just brutal because there was this really kind of odd guy there. I almost killed a drifter. Yeah, he almost killed a drifter. <laughs> Can I tell the story? Okay, about, I'm sorry. Can I tell the story yeah, about I'm the sorry. crazy fan? Which, which one? The one that I, t- I had to tell you not to shoot in the face? Yeah, you can tell us. Okay, that's probably the best story. So we're in the back. <laughs> 
so, I can't go to jail for that, can I? No, 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 no. I know. I didn't do anything. So really. Frank carries, um, you know, when we're on the road, a gun. Frank carries a gun. So <laughs> I guess I had to clarify that. <laughs> You're in a band. You could be have carrying a pound of Coke. But uh, I'm, so, a, I'm a mule on the weekends. That's right. <laughs> I actually thought about, never mind. Um, <laughs> but, oh, thank you. Refreshments here. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, we're in the back of Stormy's vehicle, and we're about to roll out after this gig. <laughs> <laughs> and there was this dude that was my the, biggest fan ever. Oh my, my god! This dude I was, actually still have his picture on my phone because he would not leave me alone. It he, was, I was like, he spent probably like the whole time from once we were done to load it out. Just like he was like, oh my god, you guys are so amazing, and just like. Freaking out. Yeah, even I was done with that. I'm like, dude, we are not that good. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, thank you. Yeah, but, you know, but it, it, out, eventually man. at some point it did get a little creepy. And so Frank and I are in the back and we're about to roll out. And the guy's talking to us through the window. And Frank pulls out his gun. He's like, can I shoot him? I'm like, no, you can't shoot him. <laughs> He's like, come on. He was like, no one's going to miss this guy. <laughs> God, it sounds terrible when you tell it like I, that. Hey. That was how it was. Okay, okay, okay. Describe the guy. Did he look shifty? Uh, you know, was he touchy feely? He was really touchy. Um, he was really drunk. Yeah. And he, I don't know. I mean, like this guy. I mean, he like wanted our shirts. It was fucking weird. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I warded a shot in the face. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe a pistol, maybe a pistol whip, but not yeah. I was, a pistol whip. I would be like, yeah. I think in my defense, I wasn't gonna kill him. I was just gonna point it at him and be oh. like, please. I mean, I wasn't gonna kill. Oh, him. I thought you got like graze his ear or something. No, yeah. I would have uh. never shot at him. He was harmless. I just wanted him to go away. I was done, man. But it really uh. was hysterical the moment like I saw him pull out the gun and he just looked at me like dead serious. You know? Can I, I shoot said, him? do you want me to kill him? Do you want, that's what you, said, was he on your side of the car? Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, this is where Matt was. Here's where the door was. And he's right here. And I pull it out. And I was like, do you want me to shoot him? <laughs> and Matt was like, put the fucking gun away. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. And this dummy's over here, like, at the middle. Like, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know a fucking clue. Know. Yeah, he's <laughs> six inches away from being shot in the I face. I wasn't going <laughs> to kill him. Good grief. Oh, but you, I had a nickel but you did every time I had to say I I'm not, I wasn't going to kill him. But you didn't say you weren't going to shoot him. Yeah. So, right. he, he didn't say he wasn't going to shoot him. So yeah. I'm right. not going to kill him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to kill, kill him. him. That's right. I'm just going to shoot him a little bit. And I, I blame it on the gangster rap. Listen, yeah, I listen to an unhealthy amount of gangster rap. It's true. <laughs> you and me both. It's true. I mean, I don't, I'm not the biggest rap fan, but when I do listen to rap, it's gangster. 3-6 Mafia. Old yeah. school shit. Yeah. 3-6 yeah. <laughs> Mafia. Rick Ross. Good drive. Some hog, some hog tying, pistol whipping. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's Coke it. snorting. That's it. If you, I just know uh, that's the cool days. thing. I'm glad that Frank's in the band because I mean I know no one's gonna mess with us or if they do. I know but you know covered. it's a good thing that he had. The, he was in a state of mind where he asked for permission. Yes. Look, I mean sometimes it's it's hairy on the road. I mean let's honest. Let's be honest. We're a long way from home. Um, they, I mean, we've had car troubles before. I mean, it would suck to be... Dude, there's a stretch of highway going out to this West Texas gig that there is nothing but fucking road. No place to get gas. No nothing. If we break down out there, I'll have to shoot Matt and eat him. <laughs> You're fucked though. <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, yeah. There's no, huh? So so you've drawn out, you've drawn out plans. <laughs> yeah. Just for, yeah, okay. See, he's like... See, me and Frank are very, uh, very similar when it comes to... Uh, we we draw out the worst case scenario yeah, and prepare yeah. for that. You know, it's, you're a prepper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we'd be on the road thirty minutes. I'd probably have killed you and eat me <laughs> <laughs> before the tow truck got there. Oh, thirty man. seconds later. That's why I carry. My backpack is full of weapons and candy and uh -oh. snacks. That's what. <laughs> duct tape. I'm in duct tape. <laughs> That's what the fuck is that about? Can I suggest you add zip ties to yeah. that? Just in, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. No, no, no resin from the duct tape. Yeah. Just need just a zip tie. That's all zip we need. Tie. Awesome. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Home Depot. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> What's yours? Um, my favorite. I guess my favorite. I, it's only my favorite now because I can look back on it and say that it, 
we didn't all die, but it was our failed road trip. We had the single worst run of luck ever. I mean, I'm talking about like from the second we woke up that day to start heading out on the road, fucking nothing went right. Nothing went right. It was just, it was almost it, like it's funny now, like the amount of bad luck that we had, the only way that that road trip would have ended was in a fiery wreck. I mean, that's the, that was the pinnacle. It was like the most appropriate thing. That yeah, could happen. exactly. <laughs> it, like the, the course of events, that's that, that would have been the end, man. I mean, it's the only thing that didn't happen. We, uh, we were headed to, uh, a th- it was going to be a three-day run. We were going to Dallas, and we were going to go to uh, someplace else and someplace else. But <laughs> I don't even remember. It's not important. We didn't even make it out of fucking Waco. You know? So we drive. We, we leave to go. It's when Brad was still in the band. band. So we drive to um, Round Rock to get Brad, and we got a trailer reservation. Get the trailer but we can't get the lights to work and we <laughs> we go to to the to the auto zone they don't have our adapter to, that we need but they have every other adapter so we got a fucking chain of adapters about five long <laughs> to make this freaking <laughs> yeah. to get the to define the connections that we needed we had to buy like three literally like three adapters yeah like that. so i mean like that it was that we got the trailer late we were running late we hit the road finally, um, right outside of Waco. We pull over to get um, get gas or get something. I can't food. Even, food. Yeah, yeah, we got food. Go back to start the truck. It won't start. So like you know, we spent the first four hours of the day getting a trailer and adapters. We were already running late. Now we can't get the trailer to start. So we were. I don't know. It doesn't sound so bad now, but you just had to be there. It was just miserable. It was like the most helpless feeling. It was just fucking like, oh, fuck me. Well, what are we going to do? So we turn around. We, we finally got it started. We decided that it was too late to make it to that gig. We didn't want to chance it on the road with this, the truck we were in to go like way out. You know what I mean? And then have it leave us, you know, 500 miles from home. We were, all, we were only 100 miles from home. Let's cut our losses go back we get back to to brad's we start unloading the truck i had forgotten drums i don't know how but so like it's running in my head i was like i'm i'm positive that i put it in the trailer i'm positive because we had had it in the back of the pickup while we went to get the trailer so the only thing running through my mind is i like i dumped a 500 hundred dollar ludwig drum on the side of the road somewhere and i just i literally like when we unload the trailer i laid down <clears throat> in, in the road and I, and I just was like all right i just just something run me over, you know. I want to die. I, I was, me now. I was done. I was done, man. I was done. Drum happened to be at home. We didn't pack it. That was about par for the course there. I hurt my knee that day. The next day, you know, it was it. it I can't even tell the story. I'm getting depressed. <laughs> I really am. It was bad. I mean, and I was like, "Fuck this! I'm drinking." And I bought a bottle of Fireball whiskey, and I was like, "I'm finishing this bottle," and that wasn't really the smartest of ideas no. you were not helpful at all oh my no. goodness and i'm not one i i am literally one that i mean i've been passed out drunk before and i've never puked this was my first time it's like <laughs> wow after all these years so this so, is what that's like yeah this is what that's like I, <laughs> oh my god the road bad. experience of all time it was bad it was i mean there's, we salvaged that weekend with a show at jokers yeah which was kind of cool but then we were getting we you know <laughs> Making all these phone calls because we had all called out of work and sc- scheduled days off, excuse me. And now we're not going to make any money. But we get this gig at Jokers to, to salvage at least a little glimmer of hope. You know what I mean? <clears throat> the truck won't start. Mm. And we're stuck in Round Rock now. We had to call a, <laughs> a friend of the band, a fan came and picked us up, drove us to, we literally fucking pulled into Jokers. Jumped out of a minivan and jumped on stage. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And that, that's when I hurt my knee. And then I was out of commission for about five days. My knee was all swollen. and It was, man, it was bad. It was bad. So, so how long did it take for you to be like, okay, well, shit happens. And to get to the point where you can tell the story without getting pissed off about it. Um, it took me, dude, there was a point that week when I was late because I took the weekend off of work to go on the road trip. Then I ended up missing three more days of work because I'd fucked my knee up and I couldn't walk. 
So I I was on the phone with Matt. And I was like, dude, I think I'm done, man. I think I am done with this shit. I can't walk. You know, I'm gonna. I'm just not gonna do it. And you know, it's pretty amazing that like I mean, we really did come to very close to where some of us were. You know, like where you were gonna hang it up. And it's like, man, just to think about like some of the gigs we just had, like, like what Frank was saying before, like we had five gigs now that, I mean, they've all been really solid in like the past two. I mean, really some of our best shows. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, we're, like, we're clicking now. Um, yeah. It feels good. Yeah. It's so like now it's, you're like, okay, this is, yeah, and this, that, is, this is where we need to be at right I now. I guess basically what I'm saying is I'm a quitter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a quitter and I'm a crybaby. He's a crybaby. I'm not a fucking crybaby. Oh my goodness! I'm a crybaby. Well, you're you're um, you're, you're uh, you think about it, and everybody thinks about it. So you're not a quitter. I'm the voice of negative reason. I, they say I'm negative a lot, but I tell you what, a lot of the things that I say, I say the things that no one's nobody wants to think about, and that's why it's negative. Because I'm like, well, this could happen. They're like, shut up. That's <laughs> negative. I'm like, well, this could definitely yeah. happen, though. They're like, well. Yeah. Don't talk about it. And then when it happens, it's my fault because I talk about it. That's, well, you bring, no, the, you bring you say, up the bad juju, you know? I mean, just, well, and what can you say? Told you. Matt said juju. <laughs> juju. <laughs> well, if anyone is going to say it. That's right. That's right. It's like, Damn, it's going to be me. He's a good juju. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. So you guys got any more interesting stories on the road stories? Um, oh, man. That we can say. Maybe I, I, I cuddled with Mylon. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe yeah. you, you have a story to tell about other members in the band, like Stormy or Brad or... Well, tell your Mylon cuddling story. That was pretty good. <laughs> um, same road trip where I almost murdered the drifter. Um, <laughs> with the, the, the venue got us a hotel room with two queen beds. They were fucking fools. They were little mm-hmm. teeny tiny. So we get there and everyone's instantly like... I didn't sleep with Frank. <laughs> or that, that's what Matt and Stormy said. But Mylon was like, oh, I'll sleep with Frank. No big deal. And, you know, like, and we were all cool about it. And we were like getting ready for bed. And we laid in bed and watched Sports Center together for a minute, you know, and just kind of chilling out. And like, all right, I'm going to go to bed. And, you know, and I, we didn't, didn't try to touch each other. We went back to back and didn't, you know, but I guess in the morning, by the time morning rolled, I was like leg over him. And <laughs> we're just like, cuddle. I'm a cuddler, man. So I sleep at home with my wife. I'm just. So I guess it just happened middle of the night, and Mylon's a good sport. He just laid there. Yeah. He just, took it. Yeah, <laughs> he laid back. Just went back to sleep. He was like, eh. yeah. <laughs> so we were all comfortable. Everyone was happy. We woke up, got some breakfast, and and it was great because Stormy and I we had like the unspoken Stormy code. And fucking Matt slept like this all fucking night. No, it was great. It? Like I slept, you know, facing that way, and he slept this way, and there was like a two foot barrier between us like of air whatever happened so. to the good old fashioned okay you sl- you sleep with your head this way and I'll sleep with my head this way whatever happened to that what is that I never, Ooh, heard. I never don't heard know that? is yeah. that too close to the balls I don't know man no man I, okay like <laughs> here, here's the bed right here okay oh, I know what you're saying yeah, yeah. head yeah. this way feet this way head that way or a barrier of pillows in between well, we didn't have enough pillows yeah yeah okay. this was a cheap hotel so the, un- the unspoken yeah. agreement yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We have a barrier of so air. We joke about murdering drifters, but there was probably a drifter <coughs> murdered in there at some point. It was yeah. pretty rough hotel. Yeah. So was, uh, that kind of reminds me of uh, the Stormy was involved in this this particular hotel story that I have. Uh, we were uh, wow, in, Stormy's involved in a lot of hotel stories. <laughs> it, it, we were in uh, New Braunfels, and uh, we were staying at this. I can't remember what hotel it was, uh, but we had two rooms, and uh, one room was me, Ashley. Uh, Brian, uh, Connor, Connor. Yeah. yeah, and Justin Bravo. Okay, and the other room was John Chappelle, uh, <laughs> um, Stormy, and um, Marvin. Uh, not, is, not Marvin. Oh, uh, this is uh, not Marvin. Uh, I got a good Marvin story about New Braunfels. Okay, well, let's tell that, and then I'll go back to it because I can't remember the exact who was in. Who is was. I think I heard is, is this the pissing story? The yes, pissing story. Yes. I know this pissing yeah. story. Yeah. So okay, I, no one has told the story on on the podcast yet. We said we would tell it, but we never did. So you well, here go. Goes. All right, here we go. And this is secondhand. I wasn't there for it, but the next night I played with Stormy doing a storm uh, a song swap uh, down in Conroe at Papa's on the Lake, opening up for Red Dirt Ramblers, and. Stormy and Deborah were just like, oh, man, I guess Marvin had got so drunk 
at one point he woke up in the middle of the night and they're all like sleeping in the living room of this place, I don't know, someone's house or something. And he thought he was pissing in the toilet. <laughs> he was pissing all over John Chappelle's harmonicas. Yeah. So and he was just pissing in the like the corner and he was just going everywhere. <clears throat> and they were like trying to wake him up and Marvin was so fucking gone. So yeah, so I mean that's pretty much the gist of it, but Poor Marvin. I don't fucking poor Chappelle, <laughs> man. Yeah, I was thinking. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Okay, let me tell you. John Chappelle got his revenge. I did. He did. If you go back and watch the uh, his interview, he talks about what he did to Marvin's guitar. Oh no. And I don't think that Marvin is uh, is a fan of the show, nor does he watch the show. So I think he has no clue to this day what John did. To you know, the, usually I watch your podcast, but I think I, I yeah, missed I didn't that know one. Chappelle did. One. I got to go, go back go. and yeah. watch that. I believe it's episode stuff. number seven. I believe. Uh-huh. Okay. I have to go back in my. You know, it's been a long. Well, good run. for John. Yeah. yeah, he got yeah. he he got his uh, Marvin got his come uh, come up and come up. <laughs> so, That's awesome, very uh, cool. But the uh, I believe uh, we had uh, in the second room was uh, Stormy. Um, I know for sure Stormy, uh, John, and uh, bass player from uh, Red Dirt. Red, yeah, uh, Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, Marcus. So, sorry, Marcus. Well, anyway, um, we're we're in there. And I guess Justin was. I didn't know where he was going to sleep. So obviously, you know, me and Ashley are going to sleep together. And Brian kind of got his bed. And and Justin gets his big ass air mattress and he's trying to blow it up. Well, he can't. He doesn't want to sleep in the same bed with Brian. <laughs> Nor does he want to sleep in the room with Stormy, John and uh, Marcus. Uh, because they hot box that place out. And you you add the, the, the smell of the hot box plus the smell of three grown ass men with, you know, overactive, uh, you know, certain glands and stuff like that right, right. it's just it's, it, it, it's a re- what it's, was going on in there it's, <laughs> it's a recipe for disaster yeah. you know you throw a match in there that that hotel room is going to explode so uh so he's trying to you know blow this mattress up and trying to get it fit so he's literally like this this thing is so huge it's it, so he's trying to blow it up and close the door at the same time so every time he, he he's you know trying to maneuver out he's got to you know kind of deflate it close the door then blow it back up open the door you know, just to get it to fit so he doesn't have to sleep in the bed with Brian. Okay. So now if you, if you guys don't know what Justin's uh, sleep patterns are like, it's like go to bed at four in the morning and wake up at 6 a.m. fresh and ready to go. Don't know how this man does. Wow. It. Yeah. Huh. So, he, um, so like uh, it was raining the next day. So we all go to sleep. Uh, they played at the, the Poe house in uh, downtown uh, New Braunfels. Went to sleep. Uh, then in the morning, I guess Marcus had, uh, had ran out of cigarettes. So Marcus kept opening the door like four or five times throughout the morning. This is the first time that Justin... Aren't you I- at rehearsal? <laughs> I'm about to leave. Oh, okay. I feel, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were already gone. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> it's like, fuck yeah. Have a good rehearsal, yeah. man. Take it easy. Sorry. Peace. So, um, you know, this is the first time I've ever seen Justin actually sleep in. And it was raining outside, so Marcus kept opening the door. And every time he would open the door, he would hit the mattress and wake Justin up. So, uh-huh. so Marcus could not figure out for the life of him that every time he did it, Justin would end up waking up because he would swing the door open like it's going to open wide open, but he yeah. ends up hitting the mattress. The mattress. Yeah. So he does it. Hey, Justin. Yeah. You got some cigarettes? Yeah, it's in the truck. Uh, I, I, I need the keys. I'm like, okay. So I give him the keys, and I'm having to reach over – you know, Justin to give give him the keys. So finally, he comes back. He opens the door. Boom. Hey, Justin, here's your keys. I'm like, so I get up, take the keys. So five times he's doing this over and over and over again. Finally, Justin's getting pissed off. He finally wakes up. Okay. So the next night uh, or the next day or that actually it was during that day, uh, they played at the River Road Ice House for a, a benefit mm-hmm. for um, a breast cancer research. So they put us up in this really, really nice um, cottage. And so it was like, uh, <laughs> so uh, Michael Kano was out there. Uh, I know Michael Kano. Yeah. <laughs> He's in Lubbock now, right? Yeah. yeah. I just spoke to him the other day, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, I spoke to him the other day, too. Are you trying to get us gigs in Lubbock? Oh, like, oh yeah, I guess. Are we? That's what we're trying to do. Oh. I was like, come on, Michael. Michael Kano, us get us some gigs in Lubbock. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't think Michael watches our show. Does he? 
I don't think he does. I'm going to tag him. fucking watch it, the, That's right. Okay. Okay. Is that, we, Michael's a badass guitarist. Yeah, he is. He's great. He's, that, no, that was part of my funny story is that <laughs> he didn't right. he didn't know uh, where the actual uh, place is that we were staying at that night. So everybody was up. They're kind of, you know, doing their thing, you know, what they do as far as uh, extracurricular activities mm-hmm. after playing. So I'm kind of. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty much. Sweet. Um, so we're watching, I believe we're watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, one of my favorite shows. So me and Marcus were in the living room, and John kind of starts crashing. So it's just, uh, I hear this sound outside, and it's Justin and Michael Kano playing guitar and singing as loud as they fucking can on the front porch of this cottage where everybody had, where everybody was sleeping outside. And we're talking about it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so they're right up early, you know, in the morning playing guitar. They go sleep for an hour, then they go hit the river. The moral of the story is. God damn, I forgot what the moral of the story was. I I totally fucking missed the point of my own story. (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. (laughs) Uh, I think I, awesome. sk- I think I skipped uh, the whole part. I think I might skip. You know what? Fuck that story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you delete that part of the? Yeah. Interview? No, I cannot. Uh, I need to be. I, I, I purposely need to be embarrassed for that one. Uh, but I, editing. The only reason why I had to edit some some of the parts of the story, the funniest parts, is because of the uh, extracurricular activities yeah. involved in that. I don't want to get it's into probably drugs. Trouble. Yeah. 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 But I won't go into any specifics. I think and we all kind of do a little editing. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely some things that happen out in West Texas that, you know, we, um, you just pretty much assume that I something. I don't want people to know. Or, yeah. Know, or mile in. Or, we killed the drifter. <laughs> <laughs> Latitude, longitude. The whole thing, you know, I mean, when every time Frank pulled out that gun. Um, not every, put, time. every time. Oh, okay, yeah, so I, I pulled it out of my Yeah. So I keep on thinking of Goodfellas. The part where uh, Joe Pesci's character kills Billy Bath and Robert De Niro's like, you're going to dig the fucking ditch. He was like, and I don't got any lie. You know, <laughs> so that's how I kind of feel. I feel like, you know, he's Joe Pesci of the group. How like many the times hit. have you pulled I'll that gun that. and threatened him? Oh, man, let's not get into that. Yeah. <laughs> It was more for comedic effect. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah no uh, one was. There was no one was ever like. Gonna I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, none of those. No, not, not okay. like that. And no. it wasn't like pointing it at anyone. I mean, it was still very it safe. Was, yeah, it was very. It was just insinuated. I'm yeah. gonna fucking you, instead of pulling it out and pointing it. I'd never do that. Just pull it out and and turn it over and say, I'm gonna pistol whip the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put bars of soap in a in a pillowcase and beat the shit out of there you. There you go. Yeah. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. That's why we should talk about movies. You want to talk about movies? Fucking A. Well, okay, well, okay. And, uh, Frank, I, Frank's you, like, no. You guys, you guys like to watch movies on the road and listen to music? What, what do you guys like to... What's your entertainment-wise, <laughs> outside of the comedic elements of, uh, you know, these certain situations that you guys get yourselves into? That's why we need a fucking DVD player. Yeah, we That's don't. We don't really do anything on yeah. the road, like... What do we do? We sit, we look at our phones. Yeah, our yeah. phones are popular. No one wants yeah. to listen to my iPod for some reason. Frank It's has, all the gangster rap. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. No, the gangster rap stuff is actually Actually, cool. yeah, that's what brings well, us all we together. We were all, like, digging yeah. it. Yeah. But he has there, some... I, there, will be a, there will be a Seven Years Today show in the future. I don't know what show it's going to be, where we will come out to a 3-6 Mafia song. Right before we play... There'll be some 3-6 Mafia. We've already, it's already been decided. We're just waiting for the right gig with the right crowd because it's not something we could pull out at, say, Ass and titty. Or, <laughs> ass and titty. I, I, I'll just yeah, I, I can imagine Ronnie Chef. Yeah. Like, he won't just like, like that. Yeah. It'll be the last time. We That'll be the last time we ever play shows. <laughs> um, but, yeah. I, yeah, I guess it's we talk a lot. I mean, we listen to music, but, you know, just. But a DVD player would be cool because we all like movies. I mean. Yeah. So I think that would be pretty cool. Do you idea. ever think about killing Frank on the road? Killing Frank? Yeah. I think about killing Frank daily. 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 And, daily. And Frank, Especially when he's way. bitching at me about gigs. Yeah. Like he goes, why don't we have anything more on the calendar? <laughs> so that's the that that's a he level. He doesn't of, have a job. Yeah. That's a level of commitment. <laughs> his, jo- his job is to get us gigs. <laughs> he told me today sometimes he lays in bed. And looks at his phone. I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it because of like, you know, literally like, I mean, honestly, this week I sent out over 100 emails. Oh. 
Sorry. for gigs. Yeah. And that's hard work. I've had responses. Was that sarcasm? No. <laughs> that's fucking. <laughs> but uh, well, there's the frustration is, involved is that, when no one responds to you. That's it. I've yeah. got so far. I got fucking like three responses. And it's like because I mean honestly like yeah we've got a Matt's not used to rejection Matt you know if you know Matt <laughs> Matt doesn't get no for ladies often uh, he he's a ladies man so he doesn't deal well with the rejection of you know being I'll, ignored by by a venue or or a, a a bar owner or something it just doesn't sit well with him he wants to go down there and he wants to fuck them in the ear hole in the ear hole yes yes but he's, I mean. What it boils down to, yeah, that's, he's afraid of the nose. That that's actually pretty accurate. I gotta admit, but I um, mean, it's true though. It's like I mean, if you ever want to fucking get used to being rejected, become a booking agent. Oh man, because it's just it's brutal. And it's not it's not even the nose. It's the fucking silence. It's like man, just I would much rather have a venue say, look, you know what, you're not the right fit fuck for off. us. You know, fuck off. Because yeah. then I could be like, all right, fuck you then. Just scratch them off the list, please. That's yeah. it. But you have these ones that don't respond. It's like, man, just take two seconds to, you know, I had this one venue that the guy said that he'll listen to our stuff. What's the name of the venue, man? Uh, Cypress Saloon. Nice. In Cypress, Texas. I didn't think you were going to say it. Fucking A. No, but it was really nice. I was very appreciative that he just responded back saying, I'll give you guys a listen. It's cool. It's him acknowledging that, hey, I got your email, you know. But then there are these ones that are just... Yeah, back. I mean, so, so I'm getting used to rejection, and, and, and also when you're looking for certain deals, mm-hmm. you know, like okay, this is what we want to, this is what we want to play for, you know, this is say, say, oh yeah, we're gonna we'll book you for X amount of dollars and this much on the tab you know, a, and this much. It's it, a game, it really. I mean, yeah. it's it's a dance, man. It, it, I and I, I don't I don't book. I mean, I just basically show up where I'm where I'm supposed to and collect my money so i i have the <laughs> benefit out, of that and just bitching at matt and i know it's hard i know it's hard man i know it's hard yeah. but i think that a lot of bands unfortunately um they they sell themselves short you know what i mean like 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 pay wise i don't i don't know what people what a lot of people are making but you know i've known what some bars have told us they're paying you know other bands and you know i don't know if you think if you think your band's worth 100 bucks to play, then that's what you're worth. You know what I mean? You've got to set the bar high. There's one venue out there that does that. You know? Yeah. So you know you've, got, you've got to set yeah. the bar high, you know? And that's, I mean, and honestly, like, I mean, I've had someone say to me, you know, Matt, you left money on the table. I mean, I've made that mistake. And uh, Don't ever do that mistake. Yeah. I don't like that mistake. I don't. No mistake. Um, but the flip side of that makes me say, well, you know what? Instead of going fucking 10 rounds with this one venue, <clears throat> I'm going to go to another venue down the street. And I'm gonna get the money that we deserve, and I'm doing that. And October 25th, we will be at Denim and Diamonds, and uh, everyone should come out. For it's gonna be a great show. Dollars. <laughs> what do you say? Nothing. <laughs> so, but that's it. I mean, you know. But and I'm very, <coughs> I'm very appreciative of the venues that pay bands what they're worth. Right. And uh, that's it. And that's the other thing is that. Booking in this area, like I'll only book one full band show in the area per month because I want to bring out a lot of people. I want us, we all promote the show. You know, we want all our fans and our friends to come out. And I want the bar manager and owner to be happy at the end of the night. I don't want to just make money. They make money. Exactly. Everyone's happy. Have us back. We'll see you in a few months. So, um, and I think that's a challenge. Um, when it comes to some of the other bands that, you know, if they keep on, if you play the same area every week, you're only going to have 10, maybe 15 people at your shows because you keep on splitting your crowd. So that's why we, we get on the road, you know, so we don't do that. So. And you got to be good to your venues too. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, like Matt, they, they told me a story about an acoustic gig that him and Mylon did where, I guess the bar owner thought that they were that, that they got paid too much, and then and Matt was kind of like, well, I, you know, I guess you know, I don't think that we're getting paid that much, knowing what the contract was, and then when at the end of the night, wrote them a check for like three times what the contract was, and Matt actually 
gave the money back. You know I mean, you can't burn the bridge. I mean, we probably we got more gigs out of that by not fucking the people. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. So. Yeah, it's a, two way, it's a two way street, of, you know, man. Integrity. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because I would have just un- kept the fucking money. But unfortunately, <laughs> but unfortunately, you got some people that you'll deal with on the road. You know, whether in this area right. or you know other areas that are not as in, you know they don't have that sense of integrity that right. you have. Hence the pistol in the bag. Yes. So exactly. and the duct tape. What do you what, you what do you do when you come me. what do you do when you come across that? If you, say you go do a gig, you got a contract, you signed it, they try to. Well, fortunately, we haven't had to cross that you bridge know, yet. But. They yeah. try to stiff you for whatever reason, you know, something that you didn't quite understand as part of an understanding between the, the you and the owner. I'll tell, I'll say this: I've played venues before in the past where we've got stiffed, and those were always places that went under. And I don't know if that's because. I, I, on, I know what it is. It's they were going under. Yeah, they were and already on the way out. They were already on the way out, so they're just fucking burning bridges because they don't care. And, uh, you know, that's their karma. You know, that's what they're going to deal with. I'm still going to be honest. <clears throat> and, you know, yeah, like that one venue that Frank's talking about, you know, I was like, man, I was like, I, we had a great show, and I was really upset, you know, hearing that we were getting paid too much. And then when I saw the check, I was like, I went to the manager and I was like, like it all clicked for me. It all made sense. And she was like, wow, this is awkward. I'm like, no, this isn't awkward at all. I said, take this check and write me a check for the amount we agreed upon and tell your owners that this is the amount we agreed upon, the lesser amount, and book us again. And we're playing there in a couple of weeks. That's awesome. So, yeah. You don't run into too many guys that are like that. So, thank Matt's you. Matt's special. Yeah. And your your special soul. That's why he's my he's my best friend. Well, and also I thought Stormy you, was your best friend. Oh damn, I forgot. Yeah. Well, and also Frank uses the phrase "best friend" a lot. You're a very he loose. doesn't get the concept that best I, friend. You only really, really have one best. That's friend. That's not true. That's not. You true. can have a best. Plethora. No, best I got is a like, bunch of bestest friends. <laughs> <laughs> got a bunch of them. You're my best Hispanic friend. I you're guess my best the, white friend. <laughs> That's the true only reason friend. I say, yeah, you're my yeah. best Jew friend. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. I can take that. But no reason I say, I guess I say that is because I really have like maybe like four friends because I'm people don't, <laughs> people don't like me. Yeah. Oh, if you're my friend, I call him you my best friend. Gotcha. Got it. All right. Okay. Why don't people right. like you, Frank? Me? Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. People. <laughs> I don't know. Where to Frank, start. I, Frank, I let, let me yeah, tell you, that. the you Central Texas yeah. Music Experience, we like Frank. Yeah. <laughs> you either like me or you hate me. There's no yeah. middle ground. There's, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you're fun, so that's, yeah. that's, that's a good thing. And I don't give a fuck. See, that's, that's awesome. A, that's why you only have a few. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the quality of your, the quality of friends, you know. Uh, yeah. 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 Fuck, fuck quantity. Yeah. I learned that a long time ago. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, guys, um, I think we probably might have maxed out on a couple couple yeah. of things, that's, and yeah. well, it's and, and only because I kind of want to head up to Busters and yeah, let's yeah, go to Busters yeah. and, and oh, check I, out. I, wanna, I got some shout outs real quick though. Before, yeah, throw a couple shout outs out there. Okay, um, got a side project. Okay, it's called Los Fits. All Misfits cover band. It's a Misfits cover band playing one show. It's October twenty sixth, Harker Heights. Pan American Club, one dollar to get in. Dollar or donation just to pay for the security guard. Costume contest. It's gonna be a good time, man. It's awesome. me and um Ricky Pincia and Junior, my buddies from Red Team Go. They're a local were a local clean band. Now they're in Austin. It's gonna fucking kill. We got uh Mr. Foff from Tiki Tattoo gonna be singing Cheeky. for us. It's going to be a good time. I want to shout out to uh, Richard Reynolds, yeah. my personal tattoo artist. Love the guy. Uh, he's got a, he, did a, he did a logo for us. We've got some t- but Other than the records coming out, we've got a merch run coming. We've got a new logo. <coughs> and we've got a, uh, a secondary logo that we, he did for us. It's just going to be a T-shirt logo. It's fucking awesome. I have to get off. I have to get on with you offline about some okay. stuff. For yeah. Some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So if you need anything, go see Richard Reynolds at Larue Tattoo. That's my boy. Los Fits. I think that's about it. And uh, Justin Horvath. He's my other, he's my bestest white friend. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Hi, Justin. <laughs> and that's it for me. Sorry about that. Any shout outs for you, Matt? Uh, 
I that. like to shout out for Matt. Um, <laughs> shout out to Willow. Hi, Willow. Yeah, my daughter. Oh, wow. Hi, Ryan. I really hope that Willow Hi, does not hear this for many, many yeah. years. So, um, <laughs> there was a lot of fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> not that she hasn't heard yeah. me. Yeah, annoying. I guess it'll be all right. Um, no, but uh, really, I mean, I'd love to see everyone out October 25th at Denim and Diamonds. Seven Years Today headline in there. Um, it's going to be great. Hit us up on the book face. Yeah, Facebook. Find us on Facebook. It's the Instagram. number seven years today. Just the number seven and the words years today. You type that in anywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Hit Facebook. Hit me up on Facebook. I, I yeah. accept often requests. He does. I will be offend, Especially those fake you. Russian accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're a douche, yeah, no douches allowed. Oh, oh man, he's got well, a lot Matt's of on my page. Yeah, I'm on there. I'm on there. You know, I'm not um, a douche. I'm trying to think of any other. No, I, I mean it's a, you know, just it's been a it's been a great run with Stormy and Frank and Mylan, and uh, I'm really excited. I'm we've, excited to play music again. Actually. We've got we've got some things like there's nothing concrete, so we're not going to jinx anything. But we've got we've got some big stuff coming, man. Yeah. It's it, Everyone will hear about it. Keep up with us on Facebook. Yeah, definitely. We got some big dates coming. We've got some music coming. We got Stormy in the band. We're playing his songs. It's going to be a good fucking run. We're going to tear it up. 2014 is going to be fucking fun. Definitely. And again, uh, you guys, you guys can find uh, out what's going on with Seven Years Today with Matt and Frank and Mylon and Stormy at seven, the number seven years today dot com spelled out. And I'm just going to throw in a couple dates, if you don't mind. Um, so that way we can. Sure. You already talked about uh, Denim and Diamonds on the 25th. Right. Um, Big Ben Tavern, Sugarland, Texas, uh, October the 17th. Uh, October the 25th, Denim and Diamonds, Diamonds in Temple, Texas. And then the 26th uh, in uh, Belton, Texas at Miller's Barbecue, which is an acoustic show. And you said you had a, a benefit that same day. Uh, or are you playing again that same day with at Sheps? No, oh my bad. That's the nineteenth. Yes. Okay, that's a separate thing. Okay, um, uh, please don't don't listen to anything I'm fucking saying. You know, <laughs> also, do I have? Because... I don't know if I have it on there, but I think it's October, Tuesday, the 29th. Let me check We've here. got um, Ozona Grill in College Station. Yeah, yeah, and that's yep. always a fun time. We've we've been down there once, and we had a blast. With those people, and I think <clears throat> that was an acoustic gig. But I think we're gonna roll I that full band. I think we're gonna roll full band that time. That's awesome. gonna yeah. be fun. So and uh, uh, November the twenty first in Buster's Bar. Yeah, are the Central Texas Music Experience official uh, sponsor, and uh, and that will be our know. official November gig for the Central Texas area. So we're gonna be promoting that pretty hard. Okay, and uh, we might have to get, try to see some what we can do offline or something like that. Cool. Sweet. Um, and you guys are going to be in Midland, Texas on December the 6th at Rednecks uh, Billiards. I'm just going off yeah. of that and yeah. it, it, I, ho- I hope you guys don't run into I don't know. Uh, now we've got some other dates that are all pending but we're just finalizing yeah, contracts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's going to get really busy real soon. Yeah, so guys, just check out the website and uh, click on the, uh, the um, actual uh, link that says uh, tour dates. And then you'll see upcoming dates, and as they get on there, you'll see more info with the dates and the the uh, venues up there. They also have a bio, photos, audio, video, newsletter. Pretty sure you guys are going to do some more updating with uh, the changes and stuff like that. So, um, also, uh, you know, keep an eye out for their merchandise. Uh, they got some cool, some cool uh, shit. That, yeah, you see that logo that Rich Reynolds did for us? It's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah, man. it's going to be a cool shirt. Awesome. It's going to be a cool show. I mean, I already like the, the logo you guys have. Well, now. don't get used to it. Damn it. Just change it. <laughs> Trademark. <Exactly. laughs> yeah. All righty. Uh, I'll plug a couple more sponsors before we get uh, done with this thing. Um, it's going to be the same sponsors as, as it always is because apparently Lone Star still doesn't want to sponsor my podcast. <laughs> sad face, sad face. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Horizon Design uh, for. T- Photography, go to www.horizondesignphotos.com. They specialize in weddings, portraits, events. You can visit their website and purchase digital files or prints. Uh, we're also sponsored by Benez Customs Leather. Uh, check them out on uh, facebook.com backslash Benez Customs. That's B E N E Z. I'm not going to spell customs because you're grown ass men. If they'd and be a gimp mask. I need that. For who? The Benez? custom leather, yeah. Maybe. Oh, I bet you they would. Maybe. With a zipper on They them. specialize in uh, custom right. handmade leather belts, holsters, <laughs> slings, phone cases. And gimp masks. And, and uh, gimp <laughs> mask. They also do uh, um, guitar straps, too. So 
Um, you can check him out for that. Hey, you know what? Just probably hit him up and see what yeah, he see what I'm he can do. Call him. Um, are those leather or are they? Pla- the good ones are leather. Not right. that I'd know anything about it. <laughs> wow. You notice how you answer yeah. that shit right away. Uh, we're yeah, also we're sponsored by uh, Buster Sports Bar. Um, they have karaoke grill. We're actually going to be heading out there right now. And, yeah. of course, uh, you can check uh, Central Texas Music Experience out uh, at YouTube.com. This will be posted up. And, uh, actually, the iTunes version of this podcast will be posted as soon as we get finished. With this podcast, it'll take me like five minutes, and it'll be up and ready to go. Sweet. The audio oh. version. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, if you wait a few hours, then the video version will be posted up, hopefully, if I don't get too drunk and, uh, for you know, forget or can't function. That has happened before. Yeah, you, yeah. Can lose the, you can lose the video. It's yeah, really the video. Okay. Yeah, let's just stick with the <laughs> And then um, uh, you can also check us out. Once we get everything back live, you can check it out at Ustream.com. Uh, but for right now, just stick with uh, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, good old iTunes. Uh, and uh, our last sponsor is going to be Coop's Vinyl Graphics, specialized in uh, logo design, T-shirts, um, any type of graphic vinyl printing that you want done. They even do car covers, for Christ's sake. So uh, it's just a plethora of different things that they can do with the vinyl material. Uh, do you guys have uh, anything else? Uh, for the the people out there. Now let's go to Buster's. Yeah. Awesome. All right, folks. Uh, this has been uh, Johnston Plumley with the Central Texas Music Experience, and we got Frank and Matt, and we're signing out. Peace.